Are you one of those people who is creeped out by snakes? How about robots? Are you a droidophobe? If you answered yes to either of those questions, we're about to change your mind. Because robot snakes, as disgusting as they may sound, are in the process of making the world a safer place. Here's Adam Yamaguchi. This is a snake from the future, not hatched in the woods or the desert, but in the mind of engineers. Let's face it, snakes get a bum rap because they slither along the ground and because they can slip in or out of small, hidden spaces unnoticed. And that freaks people out. But it's those exact qualities a snake possess that can actually be a huge asset to humans when it comes to search and rescue efforts, dangerous inspections of old piping systems, or even delicate medical procedures like heart surgery. Of course, you can't train a snake to act on command like a dog. So what do you do instead? You build a snake robot. I traveled to one of the top robotics labs in the country, located at Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, to meet the robot snake charmer himself, Professor Howie Chosette. So this lab here is called the Biorobotics Lab. The reason why it has its name is that we look at biology for inspiration to make the robots here. We have been working on snake robots for about 18 years in this group. If you look on our wall, we have a whole history of dead snake robots. Each time we iterate, we make the mechanism better and better. So this robot here, we, it can move around in some ways just like how a real snake can, but it can do other things that real snakes can't. So for example, it can climb up a pole. So if you want, why don't you put your leg right over here, and what you're seeing is that the mechanism... Oh. Wow is smart enough to hug your foot, your leg, Ooh. but we can actually regulate how hard we grab on, and then once we're grabbing on just enough, we can roll up and poke around. Snake robots can introduce a whole host of applications. One that's near and dear to my heart is urban search and rescue. We want to be able to give rescue workers a tool that will allow them to reach into a collapsed rubble pile and locate victims and do so without disturbing the surrounding areas. Other possible uses include inspecting radioactive pipes at aging nuclear power plants, and even archaeology. Archaeology is just like search and rescue, except everyone's been dead for 5,000 years, so there's no rush. Professor Chosette's students have built other kinds of useful robots, like this spider robot. This particular configuration of robot has applications in crawling over piles of rubble. Because again, you have lots of points of contact with the ground and you have nice reach, you can get to places that maybe a wheel robot can't. Professor Chosette's snake robots have been engineered small enough to work in the medical world, where they've been officially approved for surgical use in Europe. So what you have here is a surgical snake robot. It's for minimally invasive surgery. So what we can do is we can make a small incision, let's say in your chest, make a 25 millimeter turn one way and a 25 millimeter turn the other way, and you're behind the heart where you can deliver a whole host of therapies and diagnostics. While these snake robots are amazing creations, there's still more functionality that needs to be developed, and the cost to build one has to come way down in order for it to be practically affordable. Right now, I'm at the happiest I've ever been with the capabilities of this robot, and I'm still not happy. There's just so much that we want to do in making these robots work. What surprised me the most is that Professor Chosette is actually scared of snakes. All this work in snake robots has not changed what is a biologically well-based fear uh, of snakes. I just don't want to be around <laughs> real snakes. 